guys, it's your boy, Reese Boy. What's up, what's up? Happy morning, happy Saturday morning. What's up, what's up, guys? Thank you for all the birthday shout outs to Jama. She had, I guess, an okay birthday. <laughs> She's more excited to go to the Philippines than she is anything else. Um, Guys, guys, we just finished the tomato, the potato soup. It was disgusting. I did not like it at all. Sorry, Panera, that was a fail. Um, I like love Panera. Guys, you can still get Cody. Cody is up. Um, it is the coldestwaterbottle.com and then type in or then choose what color you want. They have every colors of the rainbow, guys. These keep your stuff cold for 36 hours, 37 hours, and then it keeps your stuff warm for 27 hours. And for people who do like video game, like 24 hours binging on video games, guys, on um Fortnite, get this because you can fill this up with your soda, your Gatorade, your Crystal Light, your Kool-Aid, your water. If you just drink water because you're a sports person or Gatorade because you need to do your electrolytes, get you guys one. It comes in all different colors. It comes in orange. It comes in green. It comes in yellow. It comes in pink, guys. I've been sponsored with them for two years, guys. Haven't sold one water bottle. My mom ordered a bunch of us some for Christmas, but she didn't use my right website. So it's okay, guys. But get it, guys. If you want to support me in any kind of way, get it because I get 15% of all sales, guys. And that will help me to get more stuff for YouTube. Um, and then when you get to a point where you're monetized, they actually put your name at the bottom. So it would say Reese S Boy 30 on it, guys. That would be so dope. So then I can sell those and sign the back of them, guys, and give them to you guys in a giveaway or a raffle or something. Um, so... Get one, guys, okay? Please, 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 please support me, guys. I am so close to getting monetized, guys. I'm so excited. Um, this has been a dream coming, guys, for like forever. So thank you to everybody who is watching my videos and helping me and supporting me, guys. Keep giving the thumbs up, guys. Thumbs up. We are actually going live after this, guys. I will actually be live as soon as I get to Jama's house. We are doing a game. We don't know what the game is yet, but I'll let you guys know. I'll tweet it out or text it out or whatever. We're we'll putting it on my social media, guys. Um, but we're actually going to go live, guys. And we're going to play a game. So get ready for the games. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about and spur the tea, spur the tea. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Um, is this is my goal for 2019. Or this is not 20. <laughs> this is my goal for... 2020 and then 2021 and then 2023 okay guys i'm gonna show you my goal my goal my goal for the future years two years okay so my goal for 2020 is to get to my goal weight of 250 that is my biggest goal guys like that's like number one is to get to my goal of 250 that is my goal and then my other goal is to get in a good committed relationship be with this girl for like two or three years, then get engaged, have a baby, or no, get engaged, get married, have a baby, and then start doing YouTube together as a couple channel. I'm not gonna forget about JAMA, so that's probably gonna be the biggest thing because any girl that I date has to go through JAMA, my sisters, and my aunt. <laughs> that's what they have to go through before they're good. So they have a lot of people to go through before they're the right one. The reason why I won't have my mom in there is because my mom wants to choose my person and she's wanted to choose all six of us, our helpmates. So I'm like, mm, no, she's still a little old school. So I don't want her to go through that person. I want her to go through the people who I actually listen to. Oh, and, Dur and Durrell and John and Lily. <laughs> and yeah, so it's a lot of people that she has to go through. But I really take these people's opinions to heart. And I know that they want the best for me no matter what. So those are the people that they have to go through before we would get committed and get into a relationship and start date and start dating and then, you know, later to marriage. But I want to be with a woman that's going to understand that, like, my my boyfriend is a my boyfriend has a disability, but he doesn't let it be his handicap. You know, he's doing so much and I'm proud of him and, you know, might have to help me read with certain things. Like, I don't want to put that strain on her that like, dang, I got in a relationship and I'm like raising a kid. Like, I don't want that. Like, I, that's why I'm like. And that's kind of a reason, to be honest with you guys, that's kind of a reason why I stayed with my ex. Because when I met her, I didn't know how to read at all. Like, at all. My reading was so bad. Like, I didn't even focus. And she never judged me on it. Like, at all. She had a disability. She was just ADHD. That was it. That was her only problem. But she took medication for it. And then she was a mom. And I'm like, well, shoot, if she can be a mom and have a disability, that's fine. And now her son has it. So it's like... 
she never judged like our and that's why i feel like in the next relationship that i get in i'm the type of person that i never judge you no matter what your flaws are no matter what your problem are no matter if you have a deformity whatever it is i never judge people because i've been judged so much in my life and i've been treated so poorly in my life in school and in different places and being given up as a you know as a baby not being wanted dealing with abandonment issues I think that that's another reason why I cling on to friendships so badly. And sometimes I suffocate them. Like I've had so many friendships where I look back now and I'm just like, dang, I suffocated that person so much that they were just like, I can't, I can't be friends with you anymore. Like I lost so many friendships because I was like a little, a, like a little baby. It's like, I needed them to pick me up. I need not pick me up like physically, but I mean like pick me up meaning like mentally like make me feel happy make me you know and allowing them to make me sad if I didn't hear from them for the whole day and they're just like Matt I'm working or Matt I'm at practice or Matt give me a minute dang you know like stuff like that like I so apologize like if any of you guys are watching that that knew me back then I'm so sorry because I was such a baby back then like I was so needy you know shout out to Nikki if you're watching this Nikki I miss you um Nikki was my old youth pastor. She was so cool. She was so sweet. She was like awesome. She was so cool. Um, shout out to Stephanie if you're watching this too. I had the biggest crush on Stephanie. Oh my gosh. And then when Stephanie got when Stephanie got engaged to Adam, I think his name was Adam. I'm going off the subject. But I remember, guys, everybody was like, oh my God, Stephanie's engaged. And then I remember I walked through the double doors because I was always there early. But they came a little bit later. And they're like, where's Matt? My nickname was Biggie at the youth group because everyone said I looked like Biggie Smalls. I was a lot smaller, but people called me Biggie. Um, all the kids did. The adults called me Matt. Like they knew just call him Matt because there was another Matt. There was Matt, I forgot what his last name was. And then there was Matt C. There was Matt, Matt N and then there was Matt C because his last name started with the N. So that's how they like, they they knew the different Matts, you know? And we weren't trying to be racist because there was like a, there was a black mat. I was the black mat and then there was a white mat, but we weren't trying to be racist. So we just called him like Matt N and then I was like Matt C because my last name started with a C, but all the kids called me Biggie and then they called him Matt. So, um, it was like really funny. But anyways, I remember he walked up, he's like, yo, my name's Adam. I'm like, what's up, Adam? He's like, I'm Stephanie's fiance. I said, hold up. <laughs> and he thought I was going to like fight him or something. It was a fun little joke. And like, we, it was just always our joke when we saw each other because everyone knew I had a crush on her. So even she knew, she knew, but it was like a sweet little crush. And um, it wasn't like anything crazy, but she thought it was so sweet. She's like, I'm so fattered. But now they're happy. They're married. I, like, I just saw her like a few years ago um, in Waterford Lake. She was walking and she's like, oh my God, Matt, how are you? And then I'm all big, still sitting in the car. I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. But anyways, um... That's besides the point. That's my old life. But anyways, guys, so I want a girl that's going to, like, understand my disability, right? Understand that I do YouTube. Want to do YouTube together. Maybe one day we can do a couples channel. I'm still going to have Jama in my life. Jama's still scared. Like he, she said, you guys have seen in lives that some girl's going to come along and be like, well, I'm here now. You don't need Jama anymore. Not happening. I promise you. It's I'm not get, Why would I give up on Jama when she's been here for day... Well, not from day one. but Well, yeah, day one. But, like... You guys don't understand the closeness between us. Like, we're not dating. She's married. She's happy. She's in a good relationship. Um, I would never do that. Like, one, even if she, even if, like, I just, I would never, like, no. There's, that type of attraction is not even there. It's more of, like, you're my second mother. I love you. We're close. We're happy. We're fun. Best friends. She was there when I had nobody. Like, people don't understand that. She was there when I had no one. So, any other type of girl coming in the situation will have to understand that. Like, this is my BFF. You have your BFF. We keep them separate. I mean, we can all be a group and have fun and have and hang out and whatever. But if she starts to see red flags, I got to listen to her and I got to bounce, you know? Because I'll never forget with my ex. She was like, with my ex, she didn't say nothing really. But she just was like, are you comfortable with this? Do you really? Because at that time, I was ready to get married. We were looking at places. We were going to buy a ring. And I remember Jama was just like, boo, are you sure about this? Do you really want this? Because if you do, I support you. But if you don't, then, you know, it's time to bounce. And I bounce. But I don't want to talk about her so much. I always feel like I talk about her a lot. But in my next relationship, guys, the girl has a lot to, like, 
understand and be okay with. Like that, I think that that's another reason why it kind of turns me off to dating because I'm just like, what girl is going to want to be with a man that feels like he's not a full man? And that's why I'm like, I need to get someone that's like, has to understand I am a full man. It's just, I'm a different type of man. Like I can support you and I can take care of you and I can work. You know, it's not like my disability stops me from working or whatever. And even the people who have disabilities that are like that have wives and have kids and they're happy and everything because the woman loved them no matter what. Even when I was overweight, if you watch my 600 pound life, there are these men that are in relationships and the wife takes care of them. They buy them their food, they clean them, they bathe them, they take them to the doctor appointments. Like that's the type of wife I want. Not that I'm that big, but I'm just saying like, and I don't want someone that feels like, they have to be a slave and they're going to have... No, I do not in no way. <laughs> no way is that my type of attitude. I hate people who would do that to women. I hate it. I will never make my wife or my future girlfriend ever feel less than. There's no way in heck. I don't believe in that. I will never put my hands on a woman. I never have. I never will. That's not... I never grew up in, a, in an atmosphere like that. My dad never put his hand on my mom and he never would. He's not that type of person. My mom never put her hands on my dad and... I didn't grow up in that type of atmosphere. So I would not say, oh, I was learned. This is what I grew up in. No, thank God I wasn't. But I never would, I would never do that. And I'm not even a cheater. I would never cheat. I can never hurt somebody knowing that I went and did this with this person and this person is hurting. And I'm not a homewrecker either. Like if a girl likes me and she's in, a, she's married or she's in a long time relationship and here I come, I would say, look, I, we can be friends, but there's no way, there's no more than that. There's no more than that. There's no secretly kissing or secretly holding hands. There's nothing like that because I would not want to hurt that man because I know how it feels to be cheated on. Like I literally, if something happened, like say we accidentally kissed or something or whatever, I would cut that off right then. I'd be like, nope. And I would go and tell the man myself. I'd be like, sir, I accidentally kissed your wife or your girlfriend. This is what happened. I'm sorry. I'll never happen again. I'm done with their friendship. That's that's on you guys. You guys have to fix that. And if he's like, thank you for being a man, coming up forward, telling me. And if he was like, I want you to stay away from my girlfriend, I have to listen. You know, like I would never be like that type of like I just my guilt would get on me. I couldn't do that. And I know my, some people might say, oh, my God, he's a goody two shoes. I'm not a goody two shoes. It's just I've been through so much stuff in my life. And now that I'm in my new life, because I feel like God gave me a second chance at life. There's so many things that I have now. Like I have a whole list. This is my list of anybody new who comes in my life. If you get me arrested, put your hands on me. Call me retarded or stupid or slow. Call me gay. Call me, um, lie to me, cheat on me, steal from me. You're out. You're out. And I've had so many people who have done that to me in the past. And I've given second chances, second chances, third chances. 129 chances <laughs> enough enough and that goes back to that goes back to what i love and friendships that i have now is that like i'll go back to me i'll go back to john me and lily we stayed away for five years but in those five years in the back of our heads we still knew that we cared and loved for each other and that we knew that at the end of the day god would bring them bring us back together and we'd be friends again and I always told God, like, God, where's John? I want John back. I want John back. What's happening? Blah, 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 blah. I remember I even went to a psychic and asked the psychic, what happened in that friendship? Is that friendship ever going to be back? And the psychic said, yeah, you just have to give it time. He's trying to figure out who he is. You're trying to figure out who you are. And they were right. Not that I believe psychics all the time. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I went to God, who knows everything. And I was like, God, what's going on? And God kept saying, soften your heart. Be ready for when he does come back. And I'm softening his heart. He grew as a man. I grew as a man. We got closer to God and we were able to fix it. And it's like nothing ever. It's like nothing ever. Like there was no hiccup. There was like no five years lost. It was just like we both went our separate ways, but we came back because it it happened before too. It happened before when I graduated from when I left Timber when I left university and went to Timberquick. We barely saw each other. And then when he graduated, we barely saw each other. And then we connected again in 2008. So it was like or 2009, 2008. So it was like. It was fine. Um, oh my God, I go all over the place in my speeches. I'm sorry, guys. But I know God has a girl out there for me. And I know God has a man or a girl out there for you guys when your time is right. Because again, I look at my sister's relationship. She was done with men and 
her husband was done with women and they met at church and they went on that first date, felt like went, dated, whatever, came at the family, got married, and now they have a baby. So it's like, life can be like that. Like it can, in an instant, you can be single and be married and have a baby already and be like, oh my gosh, it went so fast, you know? Um, but I am a package deal. So they, the next girl is going to have to understand like, He's he's definitely a family person. Definitely loves his family to death. Maybe not all his family loves him, but he's bef definitely a family person. Definitely get homesick a lot. Even though I might try to fight it, I definitely get homesick. I don't know why. I think it's because maybe that's where I feel the safest. I don't know. Um, definitely is still probably a mama's boy, but doesn't want to say it. Doesn't want to admit it. Definitely is close to his mom because he fights with her the most. Um, definitely loves his sisters to death so she didn't have to understand that bond there and she probably would be fine with that um and definitely would get to know her mother and her father and her family first too because if we do get married that's my future family too so definitely would want to be close to both sides um and just i would want that i would want her to know that i'm going to love her no matter what and that's not going to change like no matter what happens no matter if she's sick or loses her job or loses her place or like something like that it's like i'm here for you that's not going to change like i get so i get so frustrated sometimes when i'm talking because i feel like people don't understand my heart unless you truly know me when i love you i love you for the rest of the like for the rest of my life like it doesn't matter what you do i don't know i feel like god made me this way because god knows that he wants me to be a good person and a good and a healer and be there for people. And I feel like, I don't know why I'm like this. And sometimes I get frustrated that I'm like this because it's like, I'm such a forgiving person and I'm such a, I love people to death, even total strangers. Um, I love people to death, but it's like, I don't, sometimes it's bad because sometimes it gets me in trouble and these people, I, these people use me or they hurt me or whatever. But then sometimes it's like, it's a good thing, you know, because it's like you show this person maybe who's never even had love in their life that you truly care about them and you truly love them. And they're like, that's why they're so addicted to you. Or they're so attached to you. They want to know what you're doing. They want to know who you're with because they need that love, you know. So I feel like everything happens for a reason in life. And I feel like some of the relationships that I've been in was just she was there in that time. And I was in her life at the time that she needed me like. When I was with Feliciana, that was the time that she needed me. That was the time that I needed her. When I was with Alex, that was the time that Alex needed me. When I was with Corey, that was the time that Corey needed me. Um, when I was with other people, that was the time that they needed me. Um, but I just want someone. I do want someone. I've been single for so long and I'm tired of it. Like, I want someone to be like, hey, baby, what's up, baby? What are you doing, babe? Or... Babe, let's go out tonight, especially now that I can walk. Like, that's why I'm like, let's go do stuff, you know? But I don't know. I just like, and I love to learn about people. I love to learn about new people. I love to learn about like their dislikes and their likes and what they're happy about and who they care about and like different stuff like that and um, their goals in life. I just want someone that's drive like 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 if she's like big at acting or modeling or singing and she's like babe I really want to do this and I'm just like okay I'm in your corner like people keep trying to put me and Jama against each other like I'm so proud of Jama seeing her with her being so excited with YouTube me wanting that for her for the last two years like stop putting us against each other I'm proud of her I'm happy for her I'm not a jealous person at all like you know, like if she makes it before I do, I'm proud of her because I know at the same time she's going to help me too. You know, if I make it before her, I'm going to help her too. Like I wanted someone to do this with me and no one in my family wants to do it. So I'm happy that she wants to do that. And that's why I'm like, come on, let's do this. Like, it's going to be amazing. So it's like, if my girlfriend's like, babe, I really want to start acting. Do you support me? Heck yeah, I support you. Let's go. You know, I'll come to you to the auditions. You get it. You don't get it. I'm here. You know, if you need to pick me up, I will get you some ice cream and we sit there and cry together. Like it doesn't matter. I can't eat it, but we'll sit there and cry together. Um, it's just like, I'm, I'm excited to be in a relationship. Like I really feel like I could bring a lot to the table. And I mean, I still have my own issues. I still have my own stuff, but it's not like, I would put that on you. I would just be like, baby, right, right now I don't feel it. Like I still deal with depression that never goes away. I still deal with an eating disorder, cravings that I still get sometimes. But I'm just like, Matthew, you're stronger than this. Just deal, you know, just deal with it, you know? And I watch that scale like 
it's my new addiction. And I hate watching that scale because that's how you get yourself into another depression and then start binge eating or not binge eating, but not eating and then try to be anorexic because you're not eating anything. Like I go days, guys, sometimes when I don't eat and it's bad because I mess up my stomach that way. So you have to be very understanding, you know? So that's why I feel like my next relationship I've distanced myself from my last relationship, so I've grown over the last seven years, because it's been seven years or five years, I don't even know, since 2015. Comment below how long that's been, guys, since 2015. April of 2015, and now we're in 2020. Um, but I will say this, I will say this, guys, and I know I'm rambling, guys, I'm sorry, but I'm trying to give you guys a blog before I go live. Um, I will say this, if it could have worked between me and my ex, it would have been amazing because one, I truly loved her. We had so much fun together. We didn't even have to barely like even touch each other, but we knew there were love. And I mean like touch like on the shoulder, or hold hands or a good night kiss or anything. That's what I mean by touch. We could just know that there was love. Like when we were together, it was like a spark. Our relationship, our relationship was like the song between Rihanna and Eminem. That is our, that's literally the anthem of our relationship. That one, or like Selena and Justin Bieber, our relationship was like that. Like if you listen to her song, I forget what it's called, or Justin's song, our relationship was like a lot of those songs, different songs like that. Or like Unbreak My Heart by Tony Braxton. Like our, our life, our relationship was like that. Like there's so many different songs that were our relationship. But definitely the song by Eminem and um, Rihanna came out around the time that we were dating. And to this day, it's still like, I don't know. I just get like sad listening to it because it just reminds me of like our relationship. If you guys have a chance, listen to that one by Rihanna and Eminem. They've done a few songs, but I forget what it's called. Just type it in and you'll see it. It's dealing with something about burning down a house or something like that. I don't remember. Oh God, what is this song called? I don't remember, but our relationship was kind of like that. The song. Um... But when we were good, we were good, guys. I mean, like, good. Like, sh if she was here, we would be doing YouTube right now. We would be, like, a couple channel and be blowing up. Like, if we would have started a long time ago, the three of us, her, me, and Angel, oh, my God, you guys would love us. We would have been a family channel. But right now, we don't even talk. Like, even if we were just friends and we did a YouTube channel, that would be fun. But the problem with us trying to be friends is we always fall back into, into love. And that's why I was just like, nah, we done. Because even trying to be friends, we've tried to be friends before. And it's like, nope, we shouldn't have those feelings again. And we're like, not so many times. <clears throat> but it's time for someone new. It's time for someone new. I'm ready. And I don't care what nationality you are. I really don't. I don't really have any type of, like, preference. You know, to me, it's just like, whoever loves me for me. And I mean, truly for me. And I don't know, like, on a first date, do you tell her, like, this is what's wrong with me <laughs> or do you wait until later like i mean i don't have anything wrong with me but if i'm just like babe like my reading's a little bit bad or da, 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 you know like is that gonna be like a oh i don't want to be with him you know like that's why i'm like how long do you wait until you say that like do you be upfront honest or is that too much for the first date or for the second or third date or do you wait a few months and then say like hey there's something i want to tell you and if she's like what what is it you know and then she's scared like you know, what secrets does he have in his closet, you know? But I don't know. Only God knows. God will bring me the right person when the time is right. Everyone's like, oh, we'll lose the weight and the women will come. Oh, well, not the right women. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Not the right women. No, I mean, no one's really came. I mean, no one's really even asked me out. So it's fine seriously ask me out like I don't mean joking around like I mean seriously like to me it's not a joking matter like I'm serious like you know if you're willing to date and talk to me for six months and then we meet for the first time not right now because of what we're dealing with but later in life that's okay but I know guys I'm rambling <laughs> it's nine o'clock the bus should be here soon I'm gonna go live guys I love you thank you for watching make sure to like and subscribe turn on my notification bell guys Let's please try to get me monetized, guys, so bad. I want it so bad, guys, because I want to meet you guys. I want to go on tour next year or the year after, guys. I want to come out with some merch, real merch with a real company. And let me know what you want. Title below, guys, what you want me to, what do you want the, oh, my God, what am I trying to say? Title below, guys, what you want the shirts to say. Do you want them to say Reese Fam or do you guys want them to say 
Reese yes boy 30 or do you want them to say what's up guys it's Reese boy or do you want them to just say Reese like what you, well it can't just say Reese because I think that Reese comes what do you guys want the shirts to say okay and then should I sign the bottom of the shirts so let me know what you guys want them to say and then let me know if you guys would definitely subscribe to a duo channel between me and Jama because we want to do some duo channels soon guys so but I love you guys peace have an awesome Saturday stay safe stay blessed put God first Black Lives Matter, and um, uh, what else was I going to say? Everybody pray for each other, and I'll see you guys in the live. Peace. Baby.